Hello, my name is Ed Chapman, and today we're going to talk about polysaccharides, monosaccharides, disaccharides, all these things that we know of as carbohydrates. We're going to focus on two concepts. Uh, first of all, is really basic to all macromolecules. It's the idea that polymers are built from repeating monomers. And then we're going to focus on the two characteristics of carbohydrates that are most important. The fact that they're used as fuel for many cells and as building material, especially for insects and plants. First of all, we need to understand what a polymer is. And a polymer is a very large molecule. Uh, they're almost always organic, by the way. And they're made up of repeating subunits or repeating pieces that we call monomers. And these two words, mono and poly, are probably familiar to you from math. Poly means many, and of course mono means one. So monomers are little pieces. Hey, they can be you know anything you want them to be. Um, here I'm drawing some circles and some squares. And when you hook them together into chains, okay, we can call the chain a polymer. But each one of these subunits is a monomer. Then the word monomer is very generic. It doesn't tell you anything about what kind of molecule we're talking about here. Um, it could be a, a necklace, it could be some Legos, it could be anything. But in organic chemistry, we talk about polymers as being built from monomers. And in the case of carbohydrates, carbohydrates are built from monomers that we call simple sugars. And you probably are familiar with, with the two most common simple sugars, glucose and fructose. Now, in order to build polymers from monomers, you have to hook them together. And in biology, this is almost always accomplished by enzymes. Because enzymes, remember, are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. And one of the chemical reactions that enzymes can speed up are synthesis reactions. And synthesis reactions are any, any kind of reaction where something is being built. And in our case here, we're going to be building a polymer by hooking together two monomers. And because we're building a carbohydrate, these two monomers have to be simple sugars. So we're going to hook a simple sugar to a simple sugar. To do this, we're going to need an enzyme. And of course, the enzyme is going to hold everything so it happens, but not become part of the reaction. So the enzyme is going to make this happen and then be recycled over and over again. And because we, this is a building reaction, we're going to need an energy source because things just don't put themselves together by magically. Um, it, there's got to be an energy input somehow, and this is going to be accomplished with ATP. We'll talk more about how ATP does this in a, a later uh, video cast. All right. We call this process dehydration synthesis because we're producing water. Uh, water is a byproduct of this reaction, and I'm hoping in the next slide I can show you how this happens. So it's important to remember dehydration synthesis because we're dehydrating or taking water out. Water is a product here. Okay. It's helpful to remember that dehydration makes polymers. Okay, so we're going to focus on this word make. Okay, in the next slide, I'm going to show you something that may look a little scary at first, but bear with me. It's actually very, very simple. In this slide, you can see a glucose molecule. Okay, this is glucose. Okay, let me switch to a different color. This is glucose, and glucose, if you remember, is C6. H12O6. Okay, it's a simple sugar. Simple sugar. Okay, it's it's the glucose that's in your blood. It's the glucose that's found in honey and corn syrup and all those things. Um, very, very simple sugar. It's made up of six carbons, and I'm going to show you the carbons. There's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that should be six. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So that's where the C6 comes from. And over here we have another sugar, another simple sugar, called fructose. And fructose also has six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice that glucose and fructose both have the same chemical formula. C6, H12, uh, what, what am I doing? C6, H12, O6 but they are structurally different. Um, these atoms are assembled in a slightly different way. These are actually what we call, um, oh, what's the word for this? Um, 
well, there's, there's a chemistry word for, for same chemical formula, but different structural. Um, isomers, they are structural isomers of each other. If you wanna learn more about isomers, look them up in your textbook. All right, so what we're doing here is we're going to take this glucose and we're gonna smash it into this fructose in a very careful, very controlled way. And this is happening um, uh, with the help of an enzyme. An enzyme's gonna make this happen. And what's gonna happen is right here in this hydroxyl group, we're gonna remove the hydrogen. And in this hydroxyl group over here, uh, we're gonna remove the O and the H. So that's gonna leave an open bond with this carbon right here and an open bond with this oxygen right here. And what's gonna happen is the H and the OH are gonna come out and hook together to make water. And these two open bonds, which is forming with this oxygen and this carbon, is gonna form a linkage here. So. It's kind of like hooking together two train cars and squeezing water out in the process. So glucose plus fructose gives us sucrose. And sucrose is our double sugar or our disaccharide. And we've hooked them together by making a linkage using this oxygen right here. Now, hydrolysis is just the opposite. Hydrolysis breaks polymers apart to produce monomers. So basically we're gonna run dehydration synthesis backwards. So this is how you take things apart. And here we're gonna start with sucrose. And here you see your sucrose molecules. Here's the linkage that we built earlier. And now we're gonna use another an enzyme called sucrase. Sucrase is a digestive enzyme and it's gonna break this linkage. And when you take, when you break these covalent bonds here, they can't remember, carbon always has to have four bonds. So something has to take up the space here. So we're gonna add in a water molecule by breaking it apart into an OH and an H to fill these two bonds. So now we're restoring our separate glucose and our separate fructose. And this is a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis means to break with water because we're having to add a water molecule here. So dehydration synthesis makes, <clears throat> if you remember, makes and hydrolysis breaks. It's a nice little rhyme that might help you remember this. Um, hydrolysis is, and um, dehydration synthesis are both sped up by enzymes, uh, particularly enzymes in um, hydrolysis. And sometimes hydrolysis can actually happen without the presence of enzymes. If you heat uh, starches up enough, they'll start to caramelize or burn. Uh, you probably have seen this in cooking. It's what makes things turn brown, how you make gravy and things like that when you, when you heat up starches like um, flour or something like that. And this hydrolysis can actually happen just in the presence of heat. But um, heat, um, of course, is, is a good breaker of, of chemical bonds. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is how carbohydrates are used for two purposes in biology, primarily for fuel and as a building material, depending on what we're talking about. So carbohydrates are used for energy, which is like fuel to run a car. Uh, carbohydrates are what your body's running on, or to actually build parts of cells out of. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. Sugars are monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates you can have, and their formula <clears throat> is always some combination of C, H2O. So whatever carbon and oxygen are, you're gonna have double the amount of hydrogen. So in the case of glucose and fructose, for every carbon, you have two hydrogens, and for every oxygen, you have two hydrogens. So it's, it's a, a one to two to one ratio here. You can always recognize a sugar because it's got this um, C1H2O1 um, pattern in its, in its chemical formula. Disaccharides are just as the name implies, they're double sugars. On di means two. So double su sugars like sucrose. Um, we built sucrose earlier on. Remember, sucrose is a glucose plus a fructose. Um, they are held together by a linkage. Now, this linkage has a name. It's called a glycosidic linkage. Um, looking at this diagram here, this is not sucrose, because over here we have a glucose and a glucose working together a glucose and a glucose. So this is a different disaccharide. This is maltose. Okay, this is um, one of the sugars that's found in malted um, grains, uh, the basis for malt alcohol. Polysaccharides are true macromolecules. They can be huge, hundreds of sugars long, very long chains or branching chains. And they're used either to store away energy long-term or 
for structural purposes to build cell parts. There are two storage polysaccharides that I want you guys to be really familiar with. Uh, the first one is starch, also known as amylose. It's a plant product built by plant cells, and plants use it to store energy um, that they make by the energy that they get from the sun during photosynthesis. They, they convert glucose into starch and they store it away in their tissues. Uh, there's a lot of starch, for example, in popcorn. It's the white fluffy stuff that explodes when you heat the grains. Glycogen is a storage polysaccharide found in animals, and your liver is making it right now. It's taking glucose from your bloodstream that you digested out of your food for breakfast this morning or lunch or whatever, and popping them together, doing dehydration synthesis to build a very large macromolecule called glycogen, which is it is then storing in its cells. So your liver is literally filling up like a gas tank with glycogen after you have a big meal. There are two structural polysaccharides I want you guys to know. Cellulose is incredibly important. It's what plants use to build their cell walls. It's the main ingredient in paper. Um, chitin is another polysaccharide. It's made by insects and, oddly enough, fungi, and it's used to build the exoskeletons of insects or the cell walls of fungi. And this, I put two pictures in here to kind of show this to you. Hope you guys remember that this is the, this is representing the cell wall of a plant cell over here. This is the cytoplasm in here, and here's a, a neighboring cell, and here's another plant cell down here. This green stuff is represent, representing the cell wall, which is built from cellulose. And this exoskeleton of this cicada, which has just shed its skin, this is the adult right here, has just crawled out of this structure right here. This leftover skin right here is pure exoskeleton made up primarily of the polysaccharide we call chitin, um, or as the Brits say, chitin, um, not chitin yet. Now, it may have struck you already that paper is cellulose, and cellulose is a polysaccharide built from sugars like glucose, so why can't we eat paper? Well, you can eat paper all day long if you want to, but your body can't digest it. And the reason for that is based on what enzymes we have and don't have. Cellulose is an indigestible polysaccharide, and it's indigestible because the sugars are held together with a, a linkage that's called a beta, a, excuse me, a beta glycosidic linkage. And we do not have the enzymes to break or hydro, hydrolyze a beta glycosidic linkage. Starch, on the other hand, is built from the same types of simple sugars, but it's digestible. We can eat this stuff. And glucoses are held together with a different orientation of the same bond. It's called an alpha glycosidic linkage. And we do have the enzymes to break this type of bond. So that's why you can eat popcorn and sugar and rice and starch and pasta and all those things that are rich in this type of polysaccharide, but you can eat, also eat these, but you can't digest them. Thank you. That's the end of this video cast.